Village of Pinehurst Historic Preservation Commission. The purpose of the commission is to decide applications for certificates of appropriateness for new construction or major work within the Pinehurst Historic District, and to do so by conducting hearings and making findings of fact when such applications come before us. By law, the commission is directed to take no action except to prevent construction or alterations that would be incongruous with the special character of the historic district. I am Eric von Salzen, the chair of the commission, and I ask each commissioner, starting from my far left, to state his or her name for the record. John Taylor. Richard Vincent. Thomas Schroeder. Ann Lucy. David Herring. Terry Lurch. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, also uh, present is Alex Cameron, and I think Oh, present. I couldn't see her through Tom. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Just throw uh, something at me. Our first order of business is to review and approve the minutes of our last meeting. All commissioners have been provided with copies of the draft minutes. Does any commissioner have any changes to suggest? One, yes. One minor typo on page 8 and 15. Fourth paragraph down. Almost the last line where it says, relating to the enclosure around the mechanical, I believe it should say equipment, not wall around the wall. So that last word, wall, changed to equipment. That's all. Uh, no other changes to suggest. Uh, therefore, may I have a motion uh, to approve the minutes as corrected? So moved. There a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Uh, opposed or approved. May I now have a motion uh, to enter the public hearing? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 The opposed may say nay. No opposition. We are now in the public hearing. This is a quasi-judicial hearing. That means that anyone desiring to testify must be sworn in and the Commission is required to consider only facts presented in this hearing. The proceedings are video recorded. I ask the Commissioners if they have visited any of the sites on our docket today and whether they have had any ex parte communications with respect to any of the cases we'll be considering today. John Taylor, I have visited all, no ex parte communications. In the interest of full disclosure, I am an adjacent property owner to one of the cases we will hear. I do not believe it will have any impact on my evaluation or vote. Thank you. Richard? Richard Vincent, no ex parte communication, have visited all the sites. No ex parte communications, and I have not visited the sites. I visited all sites and have had no ex parte communications. I visited all sites and no ex parte communications. Visited all, no communication. Visited all, no communication. Thank you. In each case that the Commission will hear this afternoon, staff will first present a summary of the application. The staff's evaluation of the extent to which the application complies with the Commission's standards for such an application or raises issues that require further information. The staff's comments on the application and, where appropriate, the staff's recommendations for Commission action. The application and its supporting documents, as well as the staff's detailed report, will then be entered into the record. Commissioners will then have an opportunity to question staff about the report and testimony. Next, the applicant or the applicant's representatives will have an opportunity to provide any additional information supporting the application and to address any questions or issues identified in staff's testimony. Commissioners will then have an opportunity to question the applicant witnesses. After the applicant's presentation, if any member of the public wishes to present any evidence either in support of or in opposition to the application, please come forward at that time and identify yourself. I will swear you in and give you an opportunity to present any reasons why you believe that the application should be granted or denied. Please remember the Commission is interested in facts that will help us decide whether the proposed work would be congruous with the special character of the Pinehurst Historic District. As chair, I have the right to exclude testimony that isn't relevant to that subject, but I'm not required to do so. 
Commissioners will then have an opportunity to question you about your testimony. If the applicant or staff wishes to respond to your testimony, I will permit them to do so. We will now proceed to our first case, which is COA 2022-00082 involving 80 Dalrymple Road. Uh, is uh, the applicant present? You please come forward. You may bring anyone with you that you would like. If you would both, before you sit down, would you step to the microphone behind you so you can have a mic while you're standing? Right here. <coughs> okay, will you uh, please state your name for the record? My name is Ralph Newman, Jr. Thank you. And the other gentleman? My name is Bruce Cameron. Will you each please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Now you may please be Thank seated. You. All right, Alex, would you like to present the case? Uh, first, would you like to swear me in? Oh, I guess I better do that. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. All right, the purpose of the first public hearing is to consider a request for a Certificate of Appropriateness, or COA, uh, for the replacement of the existing windows and doors to the home at 80 Dalrymple Road. Property is further identified as Moore County Parcel ID number 00019993. Property owner is listed as the Ann Boyd Newman Trust, and the applicant and owner's representative is Mr. Ralph Newman, Jr. Uh, the land use course is a single family residential. The background on the property is that the home was, uh, was listed as being originally built in 1979. The property is 0.876 acres in size, listed as non contributing. And the existing aluminum clad windows and existing wooden three panel door units are proposed to be replaced with vinyl windows and a vinyl clad wooden three panel door. Public hearing, of course, was noticed uh, in accordance with uh, general statutes and the Finder's Development Ordinance. Subject property to this request being um, indicated on the, on the map. And you can just also see the little darker shading is the extent of the historic district boundary. So you see the subject property backs up to NC-211, which is at the very ex extent at the edge of, of that northeastern boundary of the historic district. The applicable uh, standards for, for this request are all in uh, Section 3, which is changes to existing residential uh, structures, and subsection C, windows and doors. Um, section 3C, Two, four, five, six, seven, nine, and ten staff fields are the applicable standards in this case. Um, the the basis of this is that any material changes are considered major work. Um, of course, this is a material change. Um, the standards state that any uh, proposed changes to the windows of existing structures should be compatible in size, shape, dimension, style, pattern, etc. Um, Snap-in muttons are not permitted. This is the one hard requirement. Mr. Newman, as the applicant, did provide some existing photos that have been forwarded to the commission and are shown here. This is on the front elevation, so you get an idea of the, the orientation, the size, and the style of the windows. It's images of the rear, where you can see the proposed doors that are to be replaced in the patio area. And the proposed uh, materials are also provided or designed or on, on the right. They are proposed to be a, a Pella brand, which uh, Mr. Cameron, who is just sworn in, will be able to provide some testimony to the, to the material itself. Uh, the larger existing windows do feature a 12 over 6 pattern. The proposed replacements will have a 9 over 6, which is indicated on the diagram, the small subset there on the, toward the bottom right. And to conclude, uh, 
the applicant has, has indicated through their appellate representative that the egress codes will be met, which in some cases may alter dimensions or the style based on product availability. Um, also, the larger, again, the existing windows do feature a 12 over 6 pattern, and the proposed replacements uh, are a change in the material to vinyl and a change in that pattern for a 9 over 6. The commission will need to deem that these changes uh, are compatible with the structure as well as the district and then therefore congruous with the district. So formally at this time, I would like to enter the staff report, any attachments or exhibits thereof. This presentation and any of the material the applicant has provided and forwarded to the commission and to the record. Without objection, the materials referred to uh, in Mr. Cameron's testimony are admitted uh, into the record. Do commissioners have any questions for Mr. Cameron? I have one, Alex. I don't know if it's better for you or, or for the applicants. In um, Exhibit A3, get pulled up, John? Yeah, uh, probably easier for the other commissioners if it were, yes. Bear with me as I navigate this from afar. And if technology would cooperate as well. <laughs> In the upper left corner, am I correct that the width of the door unit is 97 inches? And if so, that seems like it would be significantly larger than the existing door unit, so requiring them to increase the size of the opening and maybe impacting where the windows are placed on either side. My understanding that the door, the, the door replacement was just the one on the rear at okay. the patio. Thank you. Let me make sure I understood what you just said. They're not, you're not replacing the front door. Correct. Thank you. This is the exhibit A 2.3, the top photo, which is on the screen. Eric, nothing further from me. Yeah. Other questions for Mr. Cameron? Otherwise, we'll move to uh, the applicant. Uh, uh, Mr. Newman, is it? Uh, would you uh, like to add anything in support of your application? Uh, thank you, lady and gentlemen. I appreciate your time. Um, we are replacing, first of all, this is a home that our family owns. Uh, we currently have one of our children that lives there. Uh, we've owned it for several years. We've had to make uh, extensive um, replacements, none of which fortunately, other than the roof, required having to come before the commission. Uh, we've done that. We had to replace the whole HVA system, numerous things, uh, largely as a result of the egress and the uh, presentation of mold. And so we tracked down to the fact that uh, <laughs> the windows are a large source of the, of the problems with the windows and the way the windows are installed or incorrectly installed to begin with, presumptively in 1979, uh, are a big part. And so everything else we've done uh, has solved part of the problem, but until we replace the windows or in some way modify the windows, we're not going to solve the problem. So uh, as a result of that, we've talked to a number of different companies uh, covering a pretty wide spectrum of uh, skill sets and prices. Uh, we've ended up with uh, a gentleman, uh, the Pella Company, who we feel has the most comprehensive uh, evaluation of what needs to be done in this situation, first of all, to fix the mechanical problem, and also who happens to have a lot of experience in historical preservation other places, which was kind of a bonus. So uh, the specific designs uh, were, as I understand it from Pella, sort of the optimal that they could do considering contemporary materials um, and contemporary building codes. An exact replacement of the style of windows and 
most cases would not comply with current building code. Speculation, which I know you don't want, probably didn't comply with the code at the time they were put in. And certainly the method of installation would not have. Uh, this gentleman can testify as to how they were stuck in, but uh, he, they could be in a textbook or what not to do. But in any case, uh, we're doing this not because we want to architecturally change the look of the, the home because we like some new window. Uh, we, the, it, it's uneconomic to try to repair those windows. All the glass would have to be replaced and numerous other things. And so we're trying to get as close to what we have as we can. A reputable company who's got a world of experience in doing this. So at, at this point, I'd like to introduce Mr. Bruce Cameron, who is the North Carolina representative for the Pella Corporation, which I think is an actor, and uh, I suspect he can ask most of the questions that I'm unable to answer. Uh, thank you for your time. Yes, I've uh, been in the window door business basically since I got out of high school. This project here, um, the existing windows are an aluminum window, which is a very energy inefficient window, so they definitely need to be changed. And the proposal is we want to put the vinyl window in. The main problem here is the egress. As it stands now, they don't pass egress. And if I keep the look of the window the same, it will not pass egress. So what we have to do is elevate and elongate the bottom sash, therefore allowing egress. And, the reason, and therefore, we have to change the grid pattern. If I kept the grid pattern and I elevated the bottom sash, the box sizes would not be uniform. So that's basically, it's a fairly simple uh, thing that we're doing. And I think it's actually, a, my personal opinion is it's a better look than what they have now. I think it's a more of a cottage style window that we're planning on putting in. Um, we, everything will be assembled, attached to the brick, so we're not adding any brick mold. The glass size is going to stay fairly similar to what the glass size is now. And um, if you have any other questions, I'll be glad to answer. One, one point, uh, I think someone asked about the size of the two rear units that are almost an exact, the dimensions are sort of a, that's a complete replacement unit, is it not? You're talking about the windows and the- Yes, the, the, the door. Oh, the, the doors, door. yes. yes. It's basically the same exact pattern. There's a bit of a swing change on one of the doors, but it doesn't affect the actual look of the door. No, oh, I, I misunderstood. I thought you were replacing the front door with this. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, I now understand, I so thank you. All right, do you have anything uh, further to add? Uh, otherwise, uh, commissioners will have an opportunity to ask questions. I just, my, my question I think is fairly simple. You talked about the egress, and that is a safety issue then for getting people out and should they need to get out for fires or something to that order. Is that correct? Correct, yes, that's what's right. Okay, it's a safety issue. Then. That's specified in square inches as I read. So 5.7 square feet. None, Mr. None Newman, those, sorry, sir. I'm, we're being flagged to have you speaking to a microphone. We can't pick you up. I'm okay. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. Is this? That's better. Okay. Oh, I understand. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other uh, questions from Commissioner? Yes, sir. Very minor point, since you're not replacing the front door, all of my, my critique is gone. So good for you. <laughs> I have one minor issue on your description of project. You properly described the uh, windows starting out as 12 over 6. You're changing them to 9 over 6. That's correct. Um, in the same sentence, you say you're matching the existing glass pattern. You're not. Um, maybe I misspoke. No, oh, perfect. I, actually, the, the mistake was I took his information, I translated it to, I, I misspoke. Okay, that's okay. I just want to make sure we get it in the record right. Thank you. That's all I got. Uh, any uh, further questions from commissioners? Uh, very well. Uh, as I said earlier, if there is any member of the public who wishes to present any evidence, either in support of or in opposition to the application, Please come forward at this time and identify yourself. I see no volunteers. I'll uh, take it. Beg pardon? I said I'll take the, the appropriate. Uh, okay. this. Therefore, uh, the evidentiary portion of the hearing is closed. 
uh, and commissioners may now deliberate or move. I move that the Historic Preservation Commission approve a certificate of appropriateness and find the proposed major work at 80 Dalrymple Road is consistent with historic district standards and is deemed congruous with the Pinehurst Historic District based on the testimony given, the material submitted, and the findings of fact. Is there a second? Second. A uh, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, hearing none, I will poll the commissioners. John? Aye. 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 Eric, aye. Aye. And? Aye. Aye. Thank you. It is unanimous. Uh, the application is approved. You have your certificate of appropriateness. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. It was very informative. You're welcome. All right. Uh, the uh, next case involves uh, 100 Beulah Hill Road. Is the applicant present? Yes, sir. Can you uh, please identify yourself for the record and spell your last name for the record? Yeah, Calvin Berkeley, uh, last name B-U-R-K-L-E-Y. Will you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please be seated. All right, Alex, would you like to present the case? Sure. Okay, again, the purpose of this public hearing is to consider a, another major certificate of probateness within the district for the removal of a door with the addition of two windows on the front elevation of the structure at address is 100 Beulah Hill Road South. The property is identified as Moore County Parcel ID number 00025800. Property owner is Resorts of Pinehurst, Inc., and the applicant is Mr. Calvin Berkeley, Director of Projects and Planning. So again, there's the existing front elevation of this structure is the, the only area subject to this request. There's an existing set of doors that's proposed to be eliminated and replaced with a set of four windows. Uh, just to the right on that same elevation, additional set of two windows is also proposed. The style pattern and material color, the existing windows are proposed to, to or the proposed windows are to match those of the existing. Um, this will be again on that front elevation, which is west facing and also the side of the structure that faces uh, NC Highway 5 or Beulah Hill Road. Um, the structure, from what we can tell, listed in tax was built between uh, our records indicate from 1922 to 1926. The total uh, area of the parcel is over 69 acres inside. This is, and we'll see this a little bit uh, on the property um, hearing notification map. Um, has structures that are both listed as contributing and non-contributing within the district and wasn't able really to discern the, the difference between the two, but there are several structures located on the balance of that parcel. This request is considered major work because uh, eliminating or adding windows and doors and altering existing openings is considered major work. Uh, public hearing was noticed in accordance with general statutes in the Piners Development Ordinance, and it may be somewhat difficult to pick up uh, based on which screen you're looking at. Again, you can see the subject property, which is flanked on the west side by NC Highway 5. The structure footprint that is closest to NC Highway 5, just south of the intersection there with uh, Cherokee and uh, McCaskill, or McKenzie, I'm sorry, at the stoplight, just south and, and to the east of that is the structure subject to this request on that property. Applicable standards are all changes to existing commercial structures under general standards, A1, two and four and storefronts uh, staff decided to include those two applicable standards um, because it the way the, the standards read that storefronts and facades on non-residential buildings appear to be considered the same although this is obviously not a retail use this is a office use which supports the greater uh, recreation development property of the resort so the commission can decide whether or not these standards are truly applicable or not the applicant has provided these renderings and photos. Uh, the, the image on the top left is kind of a sighting of the proposed changes, so you can really just see the layout and the footprint of the building and the area of where those proposed changes are to be made. The images on the right are both at the top, the existing elevation, 
and then on the bottom the proposed elevation where you can see the door is being converted into a set of windows and then on the far right where a, a, a new window is proposed to conclude, these proposed changes do alter what would be considered as a main and street facing facade of that structure, but the style, material, and color does seem to match those that are existing on the structure. The commission would need to determine if these alterations to that main facade, as well as the changes to the architectural detail and orientation of that facade and fenestration are compatible with the structure and the district. Formally, at this time, I would like to enter the staff report with attachments, exhibits, this presentation, and all the applicants' materials and exhibits that have been presented and given to the commission ahead of the meeting. Uh, without objection, the uh, reference materials are hereby admitted into the record. Uh, questions for Mr. Cameron on his presentation? Uh, hearing none, uh, we will proceed to the applicant, uh, Mr. Uh, Berkeley, right? You've been here before. I should really have your name <laughs> memorized uh, by now. Uh, but uh, in any event, you've heard the uh, uh, summary of your application for, and the, uh, seen the report. Uh, what would you like to uh, add in support of your application? Um, just that the, uh, um, the addition of these windows would be um, the uh, aluminum clad uh, windows, and they, they will match what is existing on the, on the building, what the Rendering on the, the lower rendering does not show is there's another uh, double set that's very similar to the, the, the two um, right to the right of that. Um, it's not really relevant, but what's the reason for changing the, uh, the door into windows? So we are converting that, uh, what was previously a storage bay, into uh, office area. And I take it there's access to the uh, office through something other than going through the windows? Yes. Yes, through the, uh, um, through the interior of the building. Um, any uh, questions for the applicant? I just, have, I just have one, and I believe it's... You stated it. I just want to make sure it's clear on the record. On Exhibit A4, I believe that what you were referring to, and tell me if I'm incorrect or not, is this is the window, the one in the cloud, the red cloud there is the window is going to be the two-pane window that you're replacing, and the one directly next to it that appears to be, well, which is OLZ, whatever that is, OL2 right there in the corner is the one that you were saying was the same size and type. Is that correct? Right to the right, to the right of that, yes. Low down, yeah, just to the south, yes, right in there. I just wanted to make sure I understood. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for the applicant? Uh, hearing none, uh, as I said earlier, if there is any member of the public who wishes to present any evidence, either in support of or in opposition to the application, please come forward at this time and identify yourself. Uh, seeing none, uh, therefore, uh, the evidentiary portion of this uh, proceeding is closed, unless any member of the Commission has any further questions for either Alex or the applicant. No, okay. Therefore, uh, the commission may now deliberate or make a decision. I make a motion. I move the Historic Preservation Commission approve a certificate of appropriateness and find the proposed major work at 100 Bueller Road is consistent with the Historic District standards and is deemed congruous with the Pinehurst Historic District based on the testimony given, the material submitted, and the findings of fact. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, hearing none, I will poll the commissioners. John? Aye. 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 Eric, aye. Aye. And aye. Aye. Unanimous. The application is approved. Congratulations. You have your certificate of appropriateness. Thank you so much. And our third case. Uh, uh, is COA 2022-00088 involving 50 Everett Road.
Carson, will you uh, raise your right hand, please? I will. Uh, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Please state your name for the record. Uh, Mark Wesley Parson. Please be seated. Uh, Alex, will you present the case? Purpose of this public hearing is to consider a request for a major certificate appropriateness for the construction of a new single family dwelling at the property address currently as 50 Everett Road. This construction of the single family home would be about a just over 4,000 square foot and one and a half story dwelling. The property is further identified as Moore County parcel ID number 00018777. The property owners are listed as Timothy and Carol Wright and the applicant is Mark Wesley of Mark Wesley Parson Design. Uh, a little background on the subject property. Uh, the commission, most of the, the current members may recall uh, approving a demolition for a structure um, that had kind of uh, been neglected um, over the years. It was, uh, has since been removed, so the property is currently vacant. Uh, this proposed new construction, again, a little over 4,000 square foot. It is proposed to be the main, the main exterior material is brick painted as indicated on the application, Sherwin-Williams accessible beige. Uh, there is some lap siding that is proposed to be a fiber cement product that is also uh, proposed on the structures indicated by the elevations that were submitted by the applicant. The roofing material is cedar shake. And these proposed materials, according to staff, do seem to meet the applicable standards. Um, of course, the applicant has selected a Sherwin-Williams color, um, which uh, is, does closely resemble some of the Benjamin Moore selections within the color palette. Of course, this would have painted brick, and we'll get to that in just a second. Um, approximately 13 trees, uh, based on the material been submitted, are proposed to be removed with 10 to remain. An additional 11 trees, according to the landscape plan, appear to be uh, planted um, also included are the relocation of three dogwoods on the site. Two brick walls are, are shown coming off the front elevation. They both extend into either of the left and, and right side yard. The left side is also referred to as the east side, which does face uh, Palmetto Road. The maximum height of that fence is two and a half feet, which does meet the, the standard for street side uh, facing brick walls. The wall along the right front, which extends to the right side, which is the west facing, uh, has a maximum height of three feet nine inches, according to the applicant, and it does come off uh, extending a brick water table that is shown, um, if you look at the floor plan, from where the study proposed study area is. There is also an arbor attached to this wall, is eight feet in height. Uh, also, another brick feature is a driveway column, which is proposed with a light fixture near the front of the driveway as you come into the property off of Everett Road, and it's proposed to be a maximum height, the column itself, of two and a half feet, not including the fixture, which can extend up to uh, a total height of five feet. Um, again, the original home that was demolished was built approximately 1895 and has recently been removed. It's considered major work because it is new construction, not considered minor. Public hearing, once again, was uh, noticed in accordance with general statutes and the Pioneer's Development Ordinance. You can see the subject property, which is indicated almost in the center of the map. Uh, you can see the original structure footprint, which still shows up on Moore County GIS, which again has been demolished. You can see it is a corner lot where it does have access to both Everett and Palmetto Roads. Just at the little traffic island there where Maple and Everett converge. The applicable standards are all for uh, n construction of new single family residential units, um, which in, in short, that new primary uh, residential structures must be con congruous in, in size, proportion, style, materials, character of those found within the, the range of existing structures within the Pinehurst Historic District. Also, paint colors uh, must be compliant with uh, the the color palette currently in place and the new construction must also meet all applicable requirements of the Pinehurst Development Ordinance. There are some ex accessory structures and features shown. This is mainly uh, as it relates to the uh, the pergola, um, I'm sorry, the arbor feature. 
and they must also be compatible with features of the principal structure and congruous with others in the district. Uh, building materials, um, it, we really have a list of those that are not permitted, which would not be the case for anything proposed here. The fences and walls, which we uh, spoke to about the uh, mainly on the front elevation there, uh, all fencing, if any fencing is desired, especially in the front, uh, it's not recommended, but if desired, it must be compatible in size, decorative elements and features. Um, also the, the, the measurement, um, which would be in the front three and a half feet, again, the street side facing brick walls are limited to a maximum height of two and a half feet which the proposal does meet along the, the Everett to uh, Palmetto Roadside. Uh, driveway should be located so that a minimum um, alteration to site features uh, is necessary and to preserve existing mature trees on site. Tree removal must not um, unreasonably compromise the existing tree canopy. Again, it's uh, 13 it looked like proposed to be removed with about 10 staying and um, several more to be planted. I'm going to go through a few of the images and renderings that were submitted by the applicant. You can see a rendering of the proposed front. You can see the, the brick wall features which are shown on either side, left and right or the west and east side. Here are some images of the presented and submitted site plan along with the landscape plan so you can see how the home and the site features are oriented on the lot. The elevations of the front and rear shown and then the left or east as well as the right or west facing elevations. The exterior material and color uh, selections that have been presented You'll see, of course, the cedar shake roof, and then there and it may be tougher, depending on which resolution, uh, uh, varying from screen to screen you're seeing, but the brick and trim color is, again, that Sherwin-Williams accessible beige. To conclude with staff comments, the commission would need to determine if this proposed new dwelling is congruous in size, scale, proportion, style, materials, and architectural character within the range of existing structures in the district. In addition, the commission would need to determine if the proposed site features like the brick wall and arbor are also compatible with the style of the proposed architecture of the home and others in the district. Uh, we, most of the commission is familiar that we do have a standard about painting brick, and that standard is under Section 3, which is changes to existing structures or residential structures in the district, which basically says, um, paraphrasing, that existing unpainted brick should not be painted. And the new residential construction section, Section 4, which is applicable in this case, of course, it does revert back to Section N under that section, which is the paint colors. There is nothing explicitly stating in there that brick must not be painted for new construction. Um, the, the color, um, again, it is not a Benjamin Moore selection directly out of the palette, but based on my review and colors and, and can resolutions change from screen to screen, accessible beige is compatible with other colors that we have within our district. But sure that would be a topic of conversation for the commission and the applicant and that will conclude my staff presentation so for the last time this evening I would like to formally introduce the staff report with its exhibits this presentation and all the material that has been submitted by the applicant into the record without objection the reference materials uh, are admitted into the record uh, questions for mr. Cameron um. Size, scale, and proportion, those are the kind of things I obsess about. So I'm just curious if we can, are there, is there data about the homes, the existing homes, that, so that we can make a comparison? Square footage, yeah. Yeah. And, and perhaps even, I don't know, the height, unless the applicant has that information. Being pretty familiar with this area, I would say it's generally comparable. 
It's a little less than some and a little more than others, but not out of character. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to go and research square footage. Am well, I? I mean. But I, I know the square footage of the two houses across the alley behind it, having owned both at one point in time, and it's less than one and greater than the other. And I looked, I looked online to, to get a comparison. I don't know if that's valid or not, but in the absence of any other information, I seems to be, other than the house that you used to live in, uh, the old schoolhouse, this seems to be larger than all the other homes it, in the area. It's less, than, it's less than the Cottage Colony schoolhouse and greater than Concord Cottage. Yeah. It's in between the two. What cottage? Concord Cottage, which is 185. Right, Cherokee. but I'm, I'm thinking of a couple other, few homes in that area facing um, Palmetto and Everett. And those all seem smaller. But can't, I can't speak to that. Yeah. Well, I think we, we can handle that through kind of open discussion, if that's not directed at Alex. Um, you know. And, and if, if the commission, were, some of the information, I, I, Aaron, and if I, if I think I'm correct in what you're stating is, uh, looking online, there, there is data available from the Moore County Tax Department. Now, the data they use, which is listed as, as living area, um, is, is not always representative of condition space. It could include basements, attics, or other areas, um, but it it could be data that the commission could use if, if they wanted to, and it is accessible. I can access it if the commission would, would like to have that. Well, I don't know how else we're supposed to assess size, proportion, and scale. That's, that's and I, where I'm lost. I think we're required to do so in the context of the entire district. From my standpoint, unfortunately, but I think well, that is the standard. I, I beg to differ on that, but that, um, that is the standard, the whole district. Well, I mean, it's it's a it's a case that w went so far, didn't go all the way to the, the the end of the appeals process, and who knows where it would have ended up. But um, I no, but I mean, if we're going to discuss size, proportion, and scale, I think this is very important stuff. So let me let me and also as to the color palette. I, is that it's a must, right? It is. And so that means it has to be the Benjamin Moore ones. No, okay. that, that's that's not historically how we have applied it. it you're not limited to just those selections right. by Benjamin Moore. But no. if there's another manufacturer that has, if you really couldn't tell the difference, that's how we applied the color palette. So other swatches we can see. Yeah, I have one. Okay, that's it. Thank you, uh, Alex. Uh, would you go back to uh, the, the exhibit that shows the notification uh, area. S2.2. And it, it may actually be better if I pull up the actual PDF. Mm -hmm. Might be a little easier to zoom in. I mean, I'm even having a tough time seeing from here. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, it it looks to me as though the uh, the shaded area uh, consists of two lots. Is that correct? Uh, originally, um, when when the structure was uh, since the structure has been demolished, the uh, the two lots have gone through a recombination or lot line adjustment. I see. Okay, so they are that is now a single lot. Yeah, you see right. this this is the little little piece of pie here, so to speak, that you're you're referencing. Right. Yeah. This so be, between uh, these two properties here, there's been a, a this lot has this lot line has been abolished and there's been a, a lot line adjustment. I believe it was twenty twenty, but I'm not a hundred percent certain on okay. that. And I think Alex similarly the the lot line parallel to that in the small rectangle, I think that lot line has been abolished as well. Right. So that that's effectively one lot. What used to be three lots are now two. That was going to be my question. So the, the, the narrow, long narrow one has been combined with the one, if you look at the screen, uh, to the left and down. And with 30, correct. Okay, 30 ever. Okay. And then the other two wedges have been combined into one as well. Uh, the, yeah, the, there is no issue okay. with uh, relation to setbacks for Okay, Probably I just mm -hmm. was trying to understand why there was this thing in there that didn't make any sense to me. There's there's nuances within the tax department and the, the oh, county GIS system about when when plats 
recombination plats for exempt subdivisions are approved and recorded when deeds are filed and, and when they'll they'll change the data. So that's strictly what you're seeing. The same reason why the the footprint of the building that is obviously no longer there anymore is still showing on there. I understand. I just wanted to make sure I understood. And I just wanted to make sure that we aren't being asked to do anything with respect to lot lines. That's <laughs> already not. been done by others, correct? Yeah. Right. And, and uh, I know the question on square footage, this may be the best guide as far as scale for you to be able to see building footprint of comparable properties. Yeah, but I don't see the proposed one on there. Yeah. We have to use our imagination and sort of oh, well, superimpose okay. it from <laughs> the other site plan on the other exhibit. Okay. So. Uh, any other uh, questions for Alex? Yes. Uh, I, I have a question, Alex. Is there a, 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 a sketch like this that shows the new property similar to the one that was demolished so we can get a sense of scale? The, the site plan that was submitted shows the total boundary of the area. I, I, can, I can go to that exhibit. I am, just since it's become part of discussion, uh, I am trying to comb the register of deeds to find that uh, recorded plat that did that recombination. Terry, I think exhibit well, It's eight. nice to know that the building that was demolished many years ago, but what, what we're really needing to know is the position of the new proposal and what it looks like in reference to the surrounding area. This doesn't do much for us. I think A2.1 has part of that, which is how this, prop, how this proposed house sits on this property, but it doesn't contain, it doesn't superimpose that with the other properties exactly. around it. And, and just, just to be clear, that would okay. be, is that what you're looking for? That helps, but okay. it, that, that now I have to imagine it in, in the other view. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Let me see if I can work some magic. How good is your imagination? <laughs> Uh, while you're looking, a small follow-on to Ann's comment, which I think is imp important. Um, just looking at this exhibit of the, from the tax department, I count one, two, three, four, arguably using a little imagination, at least four footprints, some of which are much bigger than the proposed one. Um, the best example is probably the one due south of this parcel. The old house. Big old structure. This one. Oh, that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Next door to John's. <laughs> and I think once we hear from the applicant, we'll probably understand some of the layout. But I mean, I, there's a difference between a 4,000 square foot single story house that's sprawling and a 4,000 square foot two story house. There's, there's, there's a difference where you lay it out with trees. So the scale is important. That's for each of us to consider and evaluate. I do agree with. Uh, with Terry, it would have been a little easier to see it. Uh, for, for me, I deal with these all day as a living, so I can see it. But I also know it would have been helpful to have it as a sort of zoomed out overlay, which that scale question could have been answered in 10 seconds for you. So. <coughs> uh, are there any further questions for Alex? Uh, otherwise, uh, Mr. Parson, would you like to address any of the issues uh, supporting your application? Yeah, absolutely. So thank you. I, um, I'm flying solo. Amanda, who is my right arm, um, isn't feeling very well today. Um, I've served on this council, on this committee. I served in 2007, and I served for six years. And I was appointed to the council, and then I came back to this committee. You were you, then. Was indeed. Yeah. Amanda, she, she served on the committee for four years. So um, I think it's safe to say we all want to be on the same page. I live eight houses down from this lot. I live in the village. Um, originally, this lot was multifamily. If you look up there right now, you'll see that there's a Palmetto house on the right. You'll see there's some condos straight up north. And then you have the Holly house. Both these lots were multifamily when, when they were bought. So my client, Mr. Wright, they, um, and Molly Goodman, she, um, she had it so it would be single family. So what we could have had there was apartments. Um, and what we can still have is two houses because it's 22,000 feet. Our tent is 10,000 square feet minimum. We have to have 75 feet of road frontage. We have 271 feet of road frontage. So my desire and Amanda's desire is when we do our job, we don't get any credit for it because it has a sense that it belongs. 
It's like someone going to the orthodontist. You don't say, who's your orthodontist? You say, that was a nice smile, right? So our only barometer is not the scale, because the PDO controls scale. Scale is controlled by the PDO. I'm only allowed to be 25 feet at the setback. I can be 35 feet total, and I can be 28% total impervious. We are 17% total impervious for the house. Even with the alleyway, we still come under 40% allowed. We're allowed to be 36%. We are at 36. We're allowed to be 40%. And I think the alley would be something that we could even, what's, what's gone on in other alleys, that might be a, something we wouldn't want to go down that, that road. Um, so once again, according to the scale which the PDO controls, I could almost double this house size. I'm at 14. I mean, I, I'm allowed 14 more percent. We don't want to do that. The Wrights, uh, this is the second house we've done for Tim and Carol Wright. Uh, our first one was a, a lot different than this one. Tim is all about the, the structure of the house. He's about the authentic materials. The cedar shake is not cheap. The copper gutters are not cheap. Um, he doesn't want cheap. We're, apt, we're actually going to do plaster walls on the inside. There's some, you guys don't see the details that go on the inside, but there's some radius arches, some big thick arches. I think today's architecture is pasteurized. Um, it's hardy siding, and there's those details that aren't found anymore. If you look at the chimney detail on that side elevation where the stream porch is, there's, there's radiuses to that chimney. There's going to be a herringbone pattern in between. There's going to be scuppers along the, um, the bottom of the screen porch. Um, those things are really important in the total design. Another thing, I started out when I first started my, my practice, I did landscape architecture. So you see that this is way and beyond, above and beyond what, what's required. What's required is foundation plannings. And I have plannings all around this property. Um, so it's authentic materials. Tim said, he, they let me kind of decide, man and I, what, what, what it was going to look like. He says, what do you want it to look like? I said, I want it to look like the oldest house on Everett Road. The one, the cottage, it is well kept and it's timeless architecture. You know, you see those details with the radius and the, the roof and the radius on the dormers. Those things are going to be um, not cheap to build, but it, it's going to be uh, a showcase. Will Huntley is going to be the um, the builder, and um, I can take any questions you have. Questions for the applicant? Yes, David. Several. Uh, first, I like it. Like your sales pitch. Well done. <coughs> um, pretty well sold before you got here, but I have several <laughs> questions. Um, you've spoken at great length about the detail that you're proposing. Sadly, it's not well presented. Um, for example, when, you, when we speak to your chimney area, you're talking about radiuses at the chimney detail and so right. on. I can't see that in the drawing. Uh, scuppers at the screen porch, not on the drawing. Well, there's there's eight pages that you don't have. You know, you been know. helpful. Yeah, but there are details that, that really aren't finished yet. We're not going to start construction until probably the fall, and we're just trying to get ahead of it. Windows are out 24 weeks right now, so. Good. On the other hand, we're going to try to approve something. And right. what I we understand. have to approve is on paper. It's not on paper. We're not approving it. Right. Um, several questions about materials, starting with the lap siding areas. Mm -hmm. Looks to me like the golf cart component, essentially mm -hmm. above the water table, all that's lap siding? Yes, sir. And then on the main garage, is that also true? Yes, sir. Is it true anywhere else? Uh, on the dormers. Dormers. Oh, you're, you're rendering on the sides the dormers uh, shakes. Oh, okay. So I miss Amanda already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shakes will be better. Okay. Oh, actually, yeah, no, I, I'm, I misspoke because I have shakes detailed on the side of the, um, the porch. I agree. If you look at that side elevation, yep. Yep. you'll see that I, I actually clicked and put shakes there. Okay, so no, no other siding like the, the lap siding anywhere else? No. Okay, then on the, um, going to the little door that's where the, where the wall comes out the west side of the house, there's a little gate there. Mm -hmm. What material is that? It's going to be a wood gate. 
painted monolithic like everything else? Yeah, maybe teak or mahogany, something. Oh, natural. But no, I think it'll be painted. Painted? Yes, sir. Okay. Same color as everything else? Mm-hmm. Okay. It is pretty much a monotone house. Can you help me by telling me what is not that magic color? Not that magic color. I've forgotten what color it is. It's oh, it's this one right here. Per perfectly beige or magnificently yeah, beige. Yeah, you, know, you know what's going to happen? Um, the same color on different materials renders different. Understood. So that's where we're going to get the, the different textures to it. I have no objection. I'm just trying to find deviations from that so I know what it is I'm approving. Yeah. This is the color. You want me to pass this color? No, no, it's okay. So the shakes are not that color. They'll be natural. No, no. Gonna... The, so the roof will be natural. Okay. But the shakes on the side will be painted. Painted also. So it really is monolithic. How about the brackets? You've got brackets, but... Bracket, brackets going to be painted as well. Okay, and they're wood? Yeah, that's wood. Is there any metal up on the top of the chimney? The screen, black? No, actually the screen is going to be either bronze or copper. Um, Tim has sent me an article from the Times, I believe it was, about the screen porch and how important they were. Um, so we don't want to do those nylon screens that kind of wave that look like uh, something you'd see in Florida. So the old-fashioned, I sent something from... Um, this old house where they did a screen and they used the old, you know, the old bronze metal screens that will patina out. Around the, I think it's the master bedroom component. There are a bunch of pairs of windows. Am I to presume that the wood separating the pairs of windows is painted like everything else? Nodded your head. You need to speak. So yes, six up on the microphone. And the, the garage <coughs> doors? They will be painted as well. Looks like they have glass in them. At least the, cart, the, the golf cart does. Yeah, the golf cart's more... You know, when we did, when we started, we've been working on this house for two years, on and off. And Molly owned the property beforehand. And I was looking forward to showing Molly what she was going to look at with, those, with that carriage house, you know, the golf cart garage. And it has a breezeway and a decorative gate to it. Because no one's going to look at garage doors. You know, it's coming from the alley. But they're going to look at a nice little carriage house door. I think that's it. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Now, Mark, two things. The, the plantings along the alley side of the garage, how tall are those? So I think I have ligustrum on the site. On the, it'll be, um, I don't remember what I put. I think it's ligustrum, seven gallon. It plants. looks like, um, wait, let me make sure I've got the right place. Yes. Oak leaf hydrangea, laurels, three so, gallon. Yeah, so the oak leaf hydrangeas, and that's a native plant, by the way, are going around that existing oak tree. And then five gallon, they're usually they're pretty good size. I'm putting oak leaf hydrangeas underneath all those existing trees, the canopy, so it's going to be big, a big brush stroke. So we also want to take care of the alley and plant on the other side with the neighbors because we'd like to hide some of it. Tim wants to clean that alley up. Right now it's got, well, you know what it is. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, my mailing in the comment, we have reasonably good tree protection on our side of the alley. There are some trees along the alley on Tim's side. It may not be possible to save all of them or desirable based on root structure, but to the extent, I think you've done a nice job along the, the Palmetto Road side. To the extent any of the larger trees could be preserved, I think that would be greatly appreciated. <coughs> No, I, I, I hug trees. I've planted enough trees, but I, I still like the... You know, we went to Charleston for an exercise to look at the landscaping, how Charleston has this feeling. And you come back and you say, you know, it's the trees that are making this happen. Um, so that's the whole idea. Like I said, if we've done our job, we don't get any credit for it. So we want it to be nestled in there. They certainly help given uh, the impression of age to it, if there are still large trees right. present. So. Um, any other questions? Applicant. All right, hearing none, 
As I said earlier, if there is any member of the public who wishes to present any evidence, either in support of or in opposition to the application, please come forward at this time and identify yourself. Sir, uh, would you go to the microphone, please? Yes. Would you uh, state your name and spell your last name for the record? My name is Jim Yardley, uh, Y-A-R-D-L-E-Y. -E Yardley, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Would you like to come sit down at the table? Please uh, tell us what you uh, have to say about this application. Just for the record, I um, spoke with Mr. Yardley a couple of weeks ago at his house and went over the plans and you know, had a 45-minute discussion. And so I think I know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> About to find out. <laughs> no, I, so I, I, I appreciate this. I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate, appreciate Mark's uh, leadership on the project. Um, I live at 30 Everett Road, so that's on this. Uh, th if this could stay up, this would be very helpful. But I'm, I'm down here off the off the chart to the to the bottom, but we uh, just to the west. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Share York. that that westerly uh, um, property line with uh, with with Tim Wright. Um, mine is a is an 1895 cottage. It's one of the original 30 odd cottages. Uh, you recall that it was significantly restored by Bart Boudreau uh, several years ago under the direction. Uh, we think it's uh, it, it was done very very well, and we, uh, we love it, and we intend to be good stewards of the property, um, and and it's uh, and it's now our permanent residence. Um, to Mark's point, I think that uh, both uh, Mark as, as as well as Tim Wright, the owner, have been very uh, forthcoming about their plans and sharing their plans with us over a long period of time. Uh, we saw some preliminary uh, drawings back uh, over a year ago uh, that Mark shared with us, and we uh, uh, we commented at that time with with Mark. And then most recently, before announcement of this uh, of this of this hearing, uh, Mark again, as he said, uh, met met with what met with me. Um, I also have had a, a phone conversation with, with so that. Uh, I, I, I do believe exactly what Mark says. Nothing that's going to come out of my mouth. And so my summary comments about about all this are as follows. Uh, first of all, I think that on the positive side, I think that Tim and Mark have exactly the right aim, as Mark said, to make this look like the oldest cottage in the in the in the neighborhood. Uh, I I think. I think I, with respect to the comments made about the, about the house itself, and the size and the scale and style, I have no problem with it. I I I, I like it. Um, I I, uh, I I commented to Tim uh, last week that if anything, it looked a little bit Tudor in style. I don't know whether he thought that was a compliment or not, but. The, the steepish slope to the to the to, to the roof and the, and the dormers, uh, the vertical types of windows all, all reminded me a little bit of of Tudor. Uh, my personal taste is not for the not for the radius or the curvatures of the in the roof. I haven't seen a lot of that in Pinehurst, but um, but that's a personal thing, and I, I have no particular objection to it. Um, one thing that. Mark pointed out in his conversation with me, and, and when I, the more I followed up and looked at it, I, I, I wonder about it, and that is the, uh, there are five existing red cedar trees, generally at the, off the front corner of the house, around where that, there's a new crepe myrtle, I believe, Mark, that's to be put in uh, there on the front, facing Everett on the uh, just to the just to the east of the front door, and this cluster of, of red cedars are, are, are 
they're very mature. They're, big, they're as tall as some of the pine trees around there. Um, and I, I know that Mark and, and Tim have grappled with this. They're going to be removed. Uh, but I, I and, and so I, I don't have an objection with it, but I, I point it out because when, when I, those are the, okay, so I think those must be the five trees mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Um, but there, there really is sort of an interesting cluster, and if, if, if uh, limbed up, uh, when you look at red cedar trees, they have a very handsome uh, trunk to them. Uh, I understand why they're, why they're coming down. Um, I, I've dealt with similar things in prior lives, and, uh, but uh, it, it's, it's too bad, in my opinion. Um, but, I, I'm not, but I do not object to it, because I know that I know the, the, uh, the angst that you all went through before you concluded that. My main concern is with, as you might expect, are with the disturbances and the site features along the west property line, which is the one I, I, I share. Um, and my concerns are not so much about any individual site feature. I know that Mark has been around here a, a, a very long time, and he and he, he knows all the individual standards, and I suspect that each, I more than suspect, I, I'm, I'm sure that each one of them uh, comports to the, uh, to the applicable standard for a wall height or whatever else. But my concern is, is much more with the totality of the disturbance along that property line and whether it's really in keeping with the special character of the village. Uh, there are different elements that you all are more familiar with than I would be. I'm relatively new to Pinehurst. Uh, but along the, among the elements of what makes up the special character of the village, uh, one of them is that between neighbors' homes, along the, private, along the property lines, there are really extensive plantings in a natural, informal setting uh, along those property lines. The plantings are trees, hardwoods, but really a lot of evergreens, particularly hollies. They're tall shrubs, sometimes as tall as, tall as, the, as some of the trees. And there are very few man-made structures. So this natural, informal look between neighbors is especially prevalent in this, part, in this neighborhood. Um, and, and, and this is a part of the neighborhood that was um, part of the original Olmstead landscape plan. You recall that that landscape plan had Holly Inn at the center and then the, the streets were off on the left and right. And this section of Everett is part of that original street plan up to about as far as uh, uh, Palmetto. The look is not always universal, this natural look, um, but it certainly is prevalent, especially in this original uh, section of town. It provides privacy in a natural setting, uh, despite the closeness of a lot of the uh, small homes. So I, I feel in my heart of hearts, and I, I, I'm gonna try to convince you that we could do a better job here of honoring this element of the special character of, of Pinehurst and creating a more natural, informal look along that uh, property line. So more specifically, if you just look at this picture, uh, first of all, the home is heavily, the siting of the home on the lot is heavily skewed toward that west property line uh, with reasons for, for whatever the, the logical reasons are that, uh, that uh, Mark and Tim can talk to. Uh, but as you can see, there's a lot of frontage from the, home, from the east side of the home to Palmetto, and there's very little room in a confined area uh, along, along the frontage of the uh, of the west property line. Um, together with that, the area that Mark has, uh, has dealt with is really attractive to me. It, it's just natural. Uh, a lot of the big trees have been saved. A couple of dogwoods are gonna be transplanted under the understory, then the um, oak leaf hydrangea, as Mark mentioned. Uh, but it just looks natural, treed, uh, very handsome. 
On the other side, on the, uh, on the west property line, not only is it confined there, but there's just a, there's a lot going on. There are the, the walls that Mark talked about, the, um, the, gate, the covered gates in the walls. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a courtyard you can see there, uh, pathway, gravel pathway, front um, parking area that, that is up there. <coughs> um, and in, in addition to the driveway and back. So there's just, there's just a, a lot going on in, in, in that confined area. More specifically, if you just take it from Everett Road back, to the alley, starting at the Everett Road side. There's that, you can see that it says gravel. That's the gravel parking area. Um, it's within about, uh, like about seven or eight feet of the property line. It's wide. It, it, it'll accompany uh, two, two cars, 50 feet long, right up to the, right up to the front of the house. Uh, and what it leaves along the immediate property line is this six or seven foot area that I think on the other, the, the landscape plan, maybe we should put up, could we put up the landscape plan because I'm going to be talking about it. I think it was... Uh, Alex, do you have the rendered copy that we've sent? What's that, Mark? Rendered copy. Actually, I, I did not receive that one. This one's fine. Huh? This is a good one. I didn't receive that one, Mark. This one's good. So where to put that all up there? Well, okay. Here, this is even better. So the, the north is up. Everett. Mm -hmm. This is lined up perfectly. So you see the, the gravel uh, parking area there that's uh, two cars wide and 50 feet long and it's close enough to the west property line so that all that's all that's left there in terms of uh, uh, landscaping is a ligustrum hedge that is I, I think intended to be maybe three feet high or so but also with a very formal look <coughs> and if you continue down from that uh, this is where the wall begins. So the, the wall comes from the house directly over to the property line. And it's probably within one or two feet of the property line, I would guess, and then heads down along the property line the full 55 feet or so of the length of the house. It's whatever it is, three or four feet high. Um, and behind the wall, as I recall, Mark, there is, the wall is at least partially a retaining wall because the uh, land, land there is going to be built up a little bit to be more compatible height-wise with the, with the gravel walkway stepping up then to the, to the courtyard. Um, behind the wall, so on this a little bit higher grade behind the wall, uh, the, the landscape plan shows five um, little gem magnolias. I have no objection to little gem magnolias, but here it's a very formal looking look to me. It, it, uh, um, you, um, I explained this to Jim when I sat down with him. So this is an R10, which is 10,000 square feet. R10, the setbacks are 15 feet on both sides. Most houses are 30 feet apart. His house is going to sit more than 75 feet away from this house. So it's more than double what the, the normal distance is. He's got a lot of buffer, yeah. if you will. Yeah. What was most important to me were those large trees on the corner of Palmetto. And to set the house back. Because there's already a buffer between him and the house anyway. So what dictated that whole house, and actually he talks about a more natural look. That property line is a straight line. And the house had to come back there so I don't interfere with all those large oak trees. If you look everywhere else on that design, the, the, the so bed organic. shapes are organic and they're radius. The only post is straight, and I do want a formal garden there. We want a, we want a formal area where everything's lit up. It's got hostas down below. Um, it's just it's a nice space. Formal garden on the west. On the west, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, may, may I interject just, just really quick? Uh, my understanding of reviewing the applications, Mark, and um, we, can, we can discuss more later after the conclusion of the hearing, um, that, that wall around that western boundary and that, that courtyard area, could you let me know, is that truly going to be a retaining wall or is that just a, a brick freestanding wall not retaining? As no, it's retaining. There's, there's five feet of drop from the, from, the, from the, actually from the garage to the front, there's five feet. So you'll right. see there's steps there to go up, but it is there to, to kind of level that lot out. By the time get, the wall gets up to the garage, it may be only eight inches tall. So it's as tall as point is down towards Everett. It, so, uh, it, and, and it, I'm, I'm sure it, since it's a retaining wall, the height's going to vary. Um, just, just for point of reference for, for everyone here, the development ordinance is going to require that basically say any retaining walls, meaning how we regulate them, anything over 18 inches in height as a retaining wall cannot be closer than five feet to a property line. So there would have to be a, a five foot setback for a retaining wall on that, on that property line, which I'm sure is shown a little bit closer now. You haven't got to, to full detail. So there would have to be a, a five foot setback for a retaining wall, and not, not a regular wall or fence, but a retaining wall. I'm happy to do something more organic if he wants to donate a few feet of property, we, we could. It seems, seems that recombination survey maybe came a little too early. Can I ask a clarifying question? Is the actual property line depicted here? Yes, sir. So the, 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 is it the dark line? Is it the thin, solid line? Yeah. Or the dotted line? The dotted line. Dotted line. The dotted line is the property line. <laughs> so just, just continuing here a little bit. So <coughs> be, beyond that wall, uh, as you get back to the garage area, and the garage uh, faces the, the, the west property line, the garage doors face the west property line as well. Um, and Mark and, and Tim have, have uh, I think they've done, uh, they've, I'm very thankful for this. And, and, an early, and so you see the, the turnaround area that's the driveway coming off of the alleyway and then turning into the, to the garages from, uh, from the west side. Uh, in an earlier version of this, a year ago, the garage was cl much closer to the property line, which meant that the driveway turnaround was essentially on the property line or within a couple of feet so that there was very little room for any natural uh, buffering. And so it, it has been moved, and, and I appreciate that very much. I, Right now, for landscaping there, Mark shows uh, four, um, I think they're jumping, or they are red maples, red maples, which, which, are, which are nice. I, I, I hope I convince, can convince Mark to maybe pull in and put in another evergreen or two in that mix as well to further. <coughs> but, but anyway, my, my general point is that there's a lot going on along that property line in a very confined area. And for the most part, it looks more formal than natural. It is. So if, if it is accurate that um, one element of the special character of Pinehurst Village has to do with natural-like uh, extensive plantings between neighbors, um, I, just, I just feel like we could do a little bit more here, and I have a couple of suggestions. One is, and I mentioned this both to, to Mark and to Tim, one alternative would be to simply move the entire footprint, uh, the how, which would include the house and the patios on both sides, the, 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 the wall, the front gravel driver, move the move the entire thing 10 feet to the east toward Palmetto, uh, which would allow then a couple of things would happen. First of all, it would allow for about a 10 foot uh, buffer of, of, of natural plantings to go in along the property line. And it would retain for Mark, if he wants the formal look, to have then the wall and the formal look as he as he's discussed he, 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 everything would stay the same except that there would be 
uh, 10 feet of buffer in there. And uh, let me, I, I, I omitted one fact that I think is, is relevant here. Um, that we talked about this being a new property line as the result of the consolidation of the small lot and the divvying, divvying up of the land. Because it is a new property line, there are, there, there was until about a year ago, no vegetation of any kind uh, along this property line. No, no, no trees, no, no nothing. Um, about a year ago, and I, I presented this to, to Mark and, and, and Tim just for their information, and they reviewed it, but I, I, uh, I planted or had planted uh, to start to create a little bit of buffer on my side uh, within, say, 10 to 15 feet of the property line. Whoops. Thank you very much. Within about 10 to 15 feet of the property line, I, I planted uh, 13 trees in an irregular uh, uh, pattern uh, to, to, to get this buffer, the natural buffering look going. They were, they were um, uh, many hollies or a couple of traditional American hollies, some other kinds of hollies, a couple of red cedars, a hemlocks in there, uh, three longleaf uh, pines. Anyway, um, all I'm doing with this invitation to, uh, to, to take 10 feet is, is for my neighbor, Tim, to help to contribute to starting to, to make a more natural uh, uh, looking uh, buffer in, in complementing what I've, what I've done today. I, I explained to Jim when I met with him for 45 minutes that the house cannot move because property lines are set and so are setbacks. And I'm, I'm actually, I'm allowed to encroach into the setback three feet, I'm two and a half feet with steps. So there's no room unless we start redesigning the house so he can have a natural side yard. We want a formal garden. I, I mentioned Charleston earlier. There's a wonderful spots in Charleston where there's little gem magnolias lined up and podocarpus, and it's really a, it's a great look. Mark, just and I, honestly, I don't think that, that landscaping is part of the standards and guidelines. But anyway, it, it, are you saying, Mark, that you you could not slide the house not without X, changing the footprint X, of, that, of the structure. You could not slide it X feet toward Palmetto based on setbacks and other things. No, I'd have to shrink the breezeway and change. There's a lot to change as we went. And you know, and, and within 75 feet, to add another five feet is or 10 feet is like adding 10 gallons into a swimming pool. I mean, it's not going to make. It's nothing. So um, he's got the property. If he wants to buffer it, he's got he's got 75 feet. He can put more trees in that no one can do anything about. So, so alternative number two, that was alternative number one. Another, another thought or another possibility is to leave the house where it is, um, but to uh, move the front parking area, slide it just five or so feet to the right, um, to the east, so that you can put in a little bit more, a little, so you'll have a little bit more buffer. I'll do there. that. I'll do that if the village lets me take that tree out. <laughs> um, it's on their property. I would love to do that, but it's village tree. Well, yeah. Anyway, to, to, to move that five or six feet to the, to the right, maybe think about uh, thinning, it, thinning down the, 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 the gravel, uh, gravel uh, driveway or gravel area there as well and, and shortening it but uh, and then further to the south moving the moving the wall or eliminating the wall and 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 uh, and the gravel path and just putting uh, more natural trees in there so that you would then have all the way from Everett all the way back to the alleyway really 10 or so feet of uh, of uh, natural buffering to work with. There's a there's a third option that uh, Mark referred to, and, and that is that the plan stays exactly as is, uh, and then I, on my property side, I've used ten or fifteen feet for the, the the initial planning of last year. I'll take another ten or so feet uh, to put in uh, more 
uh, trees, shrubs in a, uh, in a natural-like looking environment, and I'm happy to do that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that that's the most equitable solution. After all, we're, we started with a property line that didn't have any vegetation on it at all, and so now, uh, I, in, 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 this, in that solution, I would be contributing all of the buffer-like land on my side and none on the Tim Wright side. Um, as Mark said, I, I, I have the land to do that, but I also, I'm, I'm, I'm new there. We've had the property for a year and a half, two years, and I, uh, I, have, I have some thoughts about uh, additional gardens, shrub gardens or whatever that I'd like to, I'd like to think about. Uh, one, of the, one of the oddities, again, about this situation is that there, so thir my lot picked up about 30 feet uh, that was shown in that rectangle that we were talking about earlier. And right, or, right along the original property line, there are a lot of uh, very mature trees, so that in a natural setting. And so if I could just lift up all those trees and move them toward, toward this property line, I'd be a happy camper and I'd have plenty of room for, for uh, uh, shrubbery, et cetera. But, but anyway, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I don't think it's the most equitable solution in order to create a, uh, a, a, uh, a natural, informal-like look that is prevalent in the area. Um, but that is what it is. I, let me just conclude by saying that uh, I come back to, to uh, Mark and Tim wanting to, to put up the uh, house that looks like the oldest in the, in the neighborhood as if it's always been there. I applaud that. I think it will happen. Uh, and I, I, I respect all that. And, and uh, so at a very, very high level, I'm, I'm fine. Um, and I, I, uh, I, I look forward to having Tim and, and his wife, Carol, as neighbors. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Yardley. Uh, do members of the commission have questions for Mr. Yardley? I'd just like to put up that one map that shows the plots. I think it comes from the tax maps. Awesome. Yeah. And, and, and there's, there's an updated one I can try to find if that helps I just the one we have I think is good enough if you can put that one up that thing and then so so right here you see because I've, I've since looked up the the recombination survey point to his house right here okay that's his house all right and the okay the that shared... is your house where he just pointed to that's okay right. I was just wanting to make sure I understood exactly which house you were referring to yeah. and in, in our was, house what you and yours doesn't show on there, but it's, the old plot. Oh, no, but it's 15 feet farther than that one. Right. That showed right on the line. Right. Then the old teacher's cottage. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, if, you see, if you see this line right here yeah. in, in the middle, that is the shared property line now. Right. This lot line was abolished. This lot line was abolished. So 15 feet here. The house is situated 15 feet off of this property line. And about how wide is that rectangle? 30 feet. 30 feet. So there's 45 feet. 51 feet at the property line, and I, I have to go another 15 to be on a setback. And by <coughs> and at the front of the Tim study, it's 78 feet. I, sh I lasered it. And, and, and again, my, my point <laughs> does not have much to do with uh, setbacks. I'm sure that they've, they've all been um, dealt with appropriately. My point has to do with the special character of Pinehurst. One of the elements, to me at least, and I think to many of you, are the natural plantings between neighbors along the property line. And we don't have that right now. Your concern isn't with the house, it's with the more formal gardens <coughs> then? That's the issue then? That's yes, but, uh, but not only the for formal gardens, but also the fact that there's a, uh, a gravel parking area in front that is off the property line, but it creates very little room for any natural buffer. Any other questions for Mr. Yardley? I have uh, none. All right, did, uh, Mr. Parsons, you had some discussion uh, about Mr. Yardley's uh, 
testimony while it was going on. Is there anything that you would like to add uh, at this time? I disagree with uh, some of the natural landscaping in Pinehurst. When I think about those bushes, I don't think they grew up where they say Pinehurst in front of the Carolina. We have a, <laughs> we have a lot of formal landscaping within the village, all around the holly and, and up towards the, the courts with all those oriental uh, ornamental designs. So it's perfectly in keeping. And, and it's a lost art, honestly. I think with the arbor that we're going to have there, all those details that we don't have to have, it's, it's just something we look forward to. <coughs> Alex, I have a question on the parking. Is that something that has to be approved by the village, the parking? The, the shown parking on the, uh, the driveway. Um, parking areas, walks, and driveways can encroach, all, or they, they can go all the way to the setback, so they can encroach. So, it, it, I mean, it, it could go all the way to the property line. There's no prohibition on any setbacks or where it can be located. The only standard for, at, at the time, for parking for uh, single-family dwellings is that there be at least a minimum of two spaces available. In front and in back, or? Just period. Period, okay. Just by way of reference, the property at 205, which has the only driveway on the Cherokee Road side, that driveway is very close to the property line, particularly in the rear of the property. <coughs> uh, Mr. Parsons, I just wanted to make sure that you have had a full opportunity to... Oh, I believe so. We talked about on, But respond as far as the record here is concerned to... Yes, sir. Mr. Yardley's testimony. No, like I said, I met with Jim over a year ago, and he, he had concerns about the garage being too close. I mean, we've been very accommodating. I mean, you know, we put the olive branch out to Mr. and Mrs. Pazella, and I would have put it to Molly, but and I, I didn't approach uh, John because I knew he's on the commission. But um, yeah, I live down the street. I love it here. We want to, you know. Okay. Uh, any other questions uh, for, frankly, either of these witnesses at this point? Uh, we've had sort of a a panel discussion. Uh, hearing none, let me just ask the public if there's anyone else uh, in the room who uh, would like to be heard on this uh, proceeding. Yes. Okay, please come forward. Uh, would you please state your name and spell your last name for the record? <coughs> Patrick Pizzella, P I Z Z E L L A. I live at 170 Palmetto Road. Thank you. Would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please come forward and be seated. Let us uh, know what you have to say. Thank you. Uh, as I said, if you put back that map of the uh, homes there, we live right across the street uh, from um, on that Palmetto from the lot. I will say that the, uh, the GIS uh, diagram of our house is a little outdated because it's missing the room we added 10 years ago. So uh, we, we have about, uh, our home is uh, 4,000 square feet. So it, uh, that's, <clears throat> that's what it is. Um, I, uh, I do wish uh, that Molly was still our neighbor, so she could see this, what was coming about, but then if she was, John Taylor and his wife would not have returned, so it's sort of a <laughs> yin and a yang as to what would have happened there. Um, we, um, we have been wondering why it had been taking so long to begin the construction, and we were, we were anxiously awaiting uh, the arrival of our, our new neighbor. Uh, I, uh, I want to compliment uh, what the Yardleys had been doing, and he rem <clears throat> reminded me when he was testifying the plantings they put in there were are nice and I thought I, I thought when I saw those I said oh my god that's gonna fit in very well so uh, what I want to say is that I I don't know who we should build the statue to whether it's Yardley's Parsons or Bart Boudreau for demolishing that structure that was sitting on that property for that amount of time <coughs> that prevented several other people who wanted to buy that lot to not be able to buy the lot. So I just want to go on record about that particular here, piece here. of property. <laughs> and I think the Taylors will, will know that. I, um, the only thing I would, um, two minor recommendations, and uh, uh, 
one has to do with uh, any improvements that can be made to that alley while you're doing construction work, I think it would be welcome to the uh, folks in the community. And I know we've yeah. talked a little bit about that. And, uh, and MJ's pet peeve. Yes, my wife is always wondering about the alley. Looking at the trash cans, and I said, we're going to deal with that. So uh, I, I encourage that. The other thing I, I'd like you to uh, look at, and I think I, I mentioned it briefly, Mark, when we met, is that the um, on the Palmetto Road side, there is one utility pole standing there with three lines going into the ground. And I uh, would ask you, and uh, perhaps uh, the village would work with you, as a way to remove that and put that utility, that little portion underground. I think yeah. it would, from a visual standpoint, it would help uh, the community, certainly the, the rights lot. Right. Uh, and uh, so I would encourage that. I, uh, I agree. Um, Tim also talked about possibly, he said he's moved a fire hydrant in the past, but he had to pay for it. And maybe, uh, maybe the fire hydrant goes on the other, in the triangle, the trees. Okay. I think that's probably with the fire department. But that's something we talked about, and Tim's all in favor. That's great to hear. That. Yeah. Uh, um, other than that, I, I did appreciate the amount of trees that you seem to be preserving. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I do uh, understand uh, the Yardley's uh, opinions about that buffer between their homes. And uh, again, I, to me, the plannings you put in there were a signal that you were sort of, that was being handled. I guess you had some foresight about those. I didn't know. Um, and so I'm, I, I hope that all works out quite well. And like I say, I will support a private collection of funds to build a statue to whoever demolished that property <laughs> sitting there for so many years. Uh, so other than that, I, I am looking forward to the development. Uh, in Thank you for your testimony. Does any commissioner have any questions for Mr. Frizzella? I just want to say thank you for the square footage of your house because it it's had many numbers listed in that I, when I was researching, so that's really helpful. They're, they're missing that one addition, so okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, are there any, uh, is there any other member of the public who wishes to be heard on this case? Uh, see none. Uh, therefore, the evidentiary portion of this uh, hearing is closed and the commissioners uh, will now deliberate uh, and may consider a motion. Anyone uh, have a, have a I comment? had more, it's, there are more questions, and some of them may be more appropriate for a work session for us as opposed to in the context of hopefully having to come to some decision. Um, what is our authority as a commission to influence landscaping if the proposal itself is within guidelines, if you will. Secondly, whether landscaping itself should be on a standalone basis sufficient to deem something not congruous. Now, if the house on its own were deemed congruous, is the landscaping alone sufficient to deem the proposal or the application not congruous? I can answer part of that. I'm addressing the panel. I'm sorry. Uh, let me try to at least answer part of that, uh, which is that uh, have when when we receive an application for uh, new construction, it typically includes uh, and and often for renovations as well. It often includes uh, changes to landscaping. Pass on it. Uh, if we if we disapprove the landscaping but approve of everything else in the application, I suppose we tell the applicant that they have to change their landscaping in order to to proceed. Uh, that is, a, I think it's a good question, and since there's, it, it's a great question for our work session, yeah. probably. Because right now, I think we only have authority over the canopy on the street, but I don't know if what that is limited by. Is it limited by authority? Historic commissions have the ability to, to have standards on landscaping. It, it's defined by the local adopted document. So you, you have that authority. 
there are more standards currently uh, adopted that have that, that that reach beyond tree canopy the removal of, of tr private trees any alteration to existing landscaping should be congruous with uh, forget the rest of the terminology now how that relates to buffering against a neighboring property owner is, a, is another topic. Um, walls, other site features are listed under landscaping. So it's not just and preservation fences. of trees. It's not just planting of trees. Um, it's the, alter, the location of driveways, off-street parking. We have local historic preservation commissions have that authority. It's just based on what's on, what's on the books. So any action you make, it's got to be based on the standards that you have currently adopted. And I don't believe and that would be valid. what standards beyond the canopy are actually in our are actually in our standards. Well, there's guidelines as to what plantings. Right. Right. That's plantings. So. Page 58. The whole list. Thank you, David. Should I'm be sorry. what? Page 58. It's, there's a whole section based on landscaping and the standards. Should we pull it up? Oh, so let me. Here, let me, here's let me, some that were applicable to just to this case, which okay. was, that which we went through in the staff report. Section 7, which is site features, subsection C, landscaping and additions or alterations to existing landscape, including plant material, hardscape, accessory structures, must be compatible with the architecture character of the primary structure and congruous with the district. So that answers pretty much both of John's questions. This is related to the structure itself, but also with the district. Agree. And then there's the, the number three um, is related to the... Uh, uh, preserving the mature trees on site. Um, four is that if you are removing them, that it must not unreasonably compromise the historic canopy and appearance of the landscape, that you new construction minimize <laughs> those impacts. Um, and then there's some planning requirements, again, just applicable with this case. There are number five, that mechanical equipment and other areas need to be screened with some sort of landscaping feature. Is it fair to say uh, that there's nothing in those standards that's violated by this application? Not in my review. I, again, as, as brought forth in, in the hearing and testimony by Mark today, that that, that wall along that western boundary is a, is a retaining wall. So it's going to have to be set back when it comes time for final permitting uh, five feet from that property line. So there, there will at least have to be that minor of an adjustment. Alex, I, with regard to that retaining wall, suppose the grade on the high side is lowered to the point where it's no higher than 18 inches from the low side. It would then not be a retaining wall that falls in that? Correct. Any part that's under 18 inches would not have to meet that setback. But it's a single wall, so part of it's more than 18 and part of it's less because of the slope mm -hmm. of the grade. Mm -hmm. It's all going to be deemed to be a retaining wall. Yeah, but if, if it's under any portion that's under 18 inches is not regulated. Okay. Obviously, retaining walls not, aren't necessarily just perfectly linear. Some but those cases. are zoning issues. Correct? That's correct. That just would, provision would be able to, the commission or anyone here would be able to see that that retaining wall would be adjusted, although slightly more away from that neighboring property owner. Any uh, thoughts as to how to proceed, lady and gentlemen? I make a motion. Two. I find the right one. I move that the Historic Preservation Commission approve a certificate of appropriateness and find the major work at 50 Everett Road is consistent with the historic district standards and is deemed congruous with the Pioneer's Historic District based on the testimony given, the material submitted, and the findings of fact. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, let me just express A question my... prior to the vote? Are, are commission members required to vote either yes or no? Yes. They cannot abstain? They cannot abstain. I have been so advised that that's the, that's, that's the rule. In this in this agency, right? But I think you could. If you mentioned you live near that, if it's an issue of, of. Um... I think I will recuse myself from voting. All right. 
because and, and, with the with a further explanation that I am more perplexed by this than I have been with any other case in front of us. So I'm actually not sure which way I want to vote, but in any case, in the interest of preserving good neighborly relations, I will recuse myself. <laughs> okay. That's legit. Would you please leave the table? Chair rules that uh, Commissioner has uh, Commissioner Taylor has properly uh, recused himself and therefore uh, will not participate in the vote. Are we ready to for me to poll the commissioners, or is there any more discussion? No more discussion. Uh, Richard. Yes. Uh, Tom. Yes. Eric. Yes. Yes, in hopes that you can work things out. <laughs> and I, I appreciate the cordiality you've both shown in this meeting and particularly your uh, passionate presentation. Thank you. The answer is yes. Yes, I think it's a beautiful design. Uh, you, your application has been, your application for a COA has been uh, approved. Congratulations. Don't wait till the full. That concludes, uh, and, 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 and thank you all for yeah. participating Thanks. like gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, Thanks very much. Uh, that concludes uh, the uh, evidentiary portion of the hearing. Uh, all right. Uh, May I have a motion to close the public hearing and return so to the moved. regular commission? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. We are now in the regular meeting. This is a public meeting and you are all welcome to stay and observe, but only members of the commission and its staff may speak. Uh, we have been given uh, the minor work staff approvals, uh, which everyone has had an opportunity to review. Uh, Anybody has any comments on them? That's we can hear them. Otherwise, any other new, any other business? Uh, may I then have a motion to adjourn? Uh, before we do that, can we talk about setting a work session? Okay, we can do that. Uh, Alex, what do you what do you think? Within the that second full week of May, um, aside from the. <clears throat> that Tuesday, which will uh, be a council meeting um, and with the the SOP or the budget will be um, a topic of discussion amongst other things. So that would not be a, a, a good date. Um, I don't know if maybe that 12th, I, I'll be prepared in the next two weeks is what I'm trying to, if other folks are available, if we can work out some sort of, some sort of time or scheduling. I am tentatively gone the whole month of May. I could return. I'd prefer to return for the for the meeting itself and not a separate work session, but that is just me. <coughs> I could certainly phone into a separate work session if that were permitted. Uh, I don't think there's any reason we couldn't do it that way. Is that uh, we, we, feasible? We could. It's the 26th, yeah, which we, we, we don't have an idea. We got <coughs> had a light month. Um, I, I thought um, we we may have the same. I do have a conflict potentially on the 26. Um, it's not really. Uh, my son may be his graduation ascending into kindergarten, and I wouldn't want to miss it if I could possibly do that. Nor work should session. nor should you. It only happens Thank once. You for work yeah, but. Work sessions, what we've been doing, we've been scheduling those ahead of the regular meeting. So I, I don't think that would impact that. But uh, I didn't know how soon we may. If we want to wait another month. Yeah, that's fine with me. Un unfortunately, that does make me feel like I've got more time. And then I turn around, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> because then I'm also preparing packets for the regular meeting. But I can make whatever work. I think some of the cases we had today are playing right into where we <coughs> left off at the last work session. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I would like to have more discussions in the coming year to kind of maybe keep a continuing review of, of these. There's other items that are being being brought up, landscaping this evening. Um, but I, I do want to finish this charge that we initially set out on. Okay. 
I, I'm, I can be open. I can be flexible. Uh, well, uh, if John's going to be away for the month of May, uh, I, we, I personally would rather have the have you at the at the work session. Uh, and the whole gang, gang back so, together. At, and nobody else has indicated uh, uh, unavailability in June. Is that correct? Well, I've got an unavailability the week of the eighth for most of the eighth. Okay. I think I'm not around in June. And, yeah, and Ann's last meeting with us will most likely be that last meeting in May. Very sad. Really? I don't know. I have some dates in June that don't work, not the meeting date. That I will be here for that, for certain. <coughs> Put one in May, somewhere. I mean, people are going to be on vacation and in and out all over. And the odds I would try of to schedule. everybody here, I think, are going to be... I would try to schedule for May. I can call into a meeting if it's not to a work session. If it's not on the meeting date, and if it's not earlier on the meeting date, I will make every effort to be here. Okay. So, what about a uh, a work session starting uh, what uh, noon, what, what one o'clock, so we can have lunch before we meet? Is that or we could have pizza? That's to probably that's to, probably on more, the ticket of maybe more Pinehurst. time than we need. Hmm? But or Pinehurst could buy us pizza. Our taxes are going to go up. Yeah, we'll take it back. <laughs> uh, is uh, so if we do it directly before the meeting, you'd still be able to make your graduation. I should. The graduation is obviously in the evening. Um, but Cameron, right? Don't they go alphabetically and then they? Yeah, so I'd have to hurry. Yeah. So like got about a half an hour drive. Yeah, yeah, but but then you can come back later. So. That's right. So we're, are we talking May 26th? Or? My off, but yeah. May 26th before the meeting. 4 p.m. So before the meeting wouldn't interfere with your graduation. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, why don't we? Uh, why don't we do that? Okay. Uh, one o'clock on the 26th. One o'clock. Two o'clock. Two. 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 Two hours. Is the room late. available? Minute. It is okay. Thank you, Shannon. Always a step ahead of us. What date did he say? Oh, in conjunction with. So at 2 p.m., is that correct? We got to tell him before then. All right. So I'll be May 26th. Could have some new faces to introduce at that meeting as well. So that would be a good opportunity. Some new staff faces. We're not Yay. allowed to start meetings earlier than 4 o'clock, are we? Why don't we then? Oh. I think it was, it's to more to be accommodating of, for everyone. Yeah. No, to accommodate you. Can't the hearing be moved earlier? With okay. prior notice, probably, oh. but... Yeah. Yeah, we... Why don't we? Yeah. I mean, can't we? Oh, what is, I'm sorry, what is the... Um, oh, actual to HPC. A, hmm? You're saying actual HPC moving it? Yeah. If, if it'll help Alex. Oh, Ed, no, it's not. Huh? That's not the, the main issue. Yes, no, it is. No, but I mean, I mean, what's the difference? It... Well, I think there may be a different notification requirement, right, right. but that's all. Darren hasn't earned his keep lately anyway, so. Oh, so <laughs> Darren can come. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure all the applications weren't completely satisfactory and complete? <laughs> I, I, I'm picking up on what you're saying, but the deadline hasn't come yet. <laughs> well, we have already adjourned, uh, but uh, we have... Uh, so we don't have to have another motion to adjourn. I think we just adjourned the, the hearing. I think we still might need to, to adjourn the, the meeting itself. So. Well, I think we actually did, but we should, probably shouldn't have since we've been discussing the uh, work it. session. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn completely. So moved. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're completely adjourned. <laughs> and an interesting situation.